Good evening and welcome to this week's edition of Close Up. And this week, by popular demand, we have a rematch. And we are pleased to welcome back into the Close Up ring Carolyn Glick, Senior Fellow at the Washington, D.C.-based Center for Security Policy and Senior Contributing Editor of the Jerusalem Post. This week I was present when Carolyn was awarded Bar-Ilan University's Ingeborg Rennert Center for Jewish Studies Annual Guardian of Zion Award. Congratulations, Carolyn. And in the other corner, Dr. Gershon Baskin, the founder and Israeli CEO of the Israel-Palestine Center for Research and Information, which is a jointly run Israeli-Palestinian think tank that works with hundreds of Israelis and Palestinians in government and in the private sector. We welcome you both. You. Okay, Carolyn, uh, of course, the subject of this week's close-up, naturally, uh, President Barack Obama's upcoming address to the Muslim world from Cairo tomorrow, as well as his recent tough statements on Israeli settlements and peace issues. And let's start with this. It probably hasn't escaped your notice that uh, Obama has not included Israel on his itinerary this time uh, on the Middle East, which is unlike, I think, all of his predecessors, as far as I know. And also that he's making his speech on June 4th, a very significant date, of course, when we talk about the pre-June 4th borders in the peace process. What do you make of all that? I think that he's showing his contempt for Israel, and I think that it actually comes out even more clearly by the fact that not only is he not coming to visit us, he's going to visit Buchenwald death camp. So he's saying, all right, so from my perspective, it's not that uh, I'm going to go from the Arab world to the Jewish state. I'm going to go from the Arab world to a death camp. And oh, what is you're that? Going far. Uh, I'm not going far, and I'll tell you something else. Uh, it's not just uh, the Jews that he's showing contempt for, as far as I'm concerned, because from visiting uh, uh, the uh, uh, beaches of Normandy with, uh, with uh, French uh, President uh, Sarkozy on the 65th anniversary of the liberation, he's going to visit Dresden. So he's making some sort of a moral equivalence between um, the American war dead and a site of Allied bombing against Nazi Germany. And so I think this entire uh, trip is not just something that we have to take offense to. I think that basically uh, Americans and British and everybody who was involved with the Allied war effort should also be offended by what he's doing. Gesha, let's just back up a little bit to um, the upcoming speech of, of Obama. Now, already Osama bin Laden is condemning the speech in advance, is making new threats uh, on the United States. Aren't we looking at a U.S. president that is terribly naive, that's walking into I, I would say uh, an extremist, uh, a, a murderous, he, he's going to the, the murderous policies of an Islamic world and he's going to try to talk nice to them. I, I don't know if he's naive or not. I don't know yet what he's going to say. I can't tell you what his policy is on the Middle East yet because it hasn't been developed. What I think is clear is that there's a change in orientation and I strongly disagree with, with Carolyn on that, on that change. I think we have for the first time in a long time a real friend of Israel in the White House, a friend of Israel who's going to help Israel make the decisions that it has been unable to make because of domestic politics and because, because of the Because we Jewish don't want lobby. to. So he's, he's helping us by making us do something that we think no, is dangerous to our survival. What a friend. What a friend. We've just had elections. The public here we doesn't We have elections like. here. It's well, true. It doesn't matter what to. the public says. I, I, I hope that I have an opportunity to speak, no, Carolyn. No, 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 I won't interrupt ahead, you. Go ahead. Oh, good. Um, I think that it's clear that Israel is now, with its present government, a state that's really alone in the world. The entire international community has decided that there is a two-state solution to the Israeli-Palestinian conflict. It's only Israel that disagrees. Perhaps Israel, Iran, and Libya. What a club we're in. The whole world knows and agrees that Jerusalem will be the capitals of both of those states. The whole world knows that the Palestinian state will be created in 22% of the land between the river and the sea. The whole world also knows that Palestinian refugees who want to go home will go home to the state of Palestine and not to Israel. These are givens in the world, and we no longer have a president in the White House who's going to use a veto in order to support Israeli domestic politics. And you consider this a friendship? A true friendship, and I want to remind you that three out of four American Jews voted for Obama. And this means what? That we're supposed to change the way that we vote in the Israeli no, no, Olympi not at all. elections? Not at all. Uh, but to these elections people who in never Israel. come here, who aren't planning on moving uh, here. are you inviting uh, American pressure on, the, on Israel's welcoming government? It. I'm welcoming tender, loving care instead of the bear hug that's held us in the wrong place for so many years. Oh, we need dear. the tough love 
of the Obama administration that's going to help Israel do what Israel needs to do in order to survive. But, yeah, so we if Israel a... wants to remain the state of the Jewish people, we have to detach ourselves from occupying the Palestinian people. What's the difference between what you said and what the, what the editor of Haaretz, uh, the former editor of Haaretz, said, uh, David Land out of Condi Rice? He asked her to rape us. Isn't that basically no, what you're telling No, not at all. I'm not asking to be raped. I'm asking to be helped. Okay. Uh, I, I want to ask you a question, Carolyn, from, coming from a different point of view. What is wrong with coming to the Muslim world, to one and a half billion Muslims in the world, as the leader of the free world, as the United States president, and trying to be conciliatory, trying to say, okay, guys, maybe there have been mistakes in the past, let's open a new chapter. Is that a bad thing? What, what mistakes did the United States make exactly? That they liberated 25 million Iraqis from Saddam Hussein? That they overthrew the Taliban regime in Afghanistan? That they overthrew, that, that they uh, secured Bosnia for the Muslims that were fighting against the Christian Serbs? What, what exactly is the great sin, the great crime that the United States has to uh, uh, adopt a conciliatory approach? Conciliation is not the same as apology. They don't have to necessarily apologize for their policies, well, but just, the fact yeah. is that America, as you very well know, is abhorred by the Arab world. And so are we. I, again, you know, uh, Gershon wants us to be uh, loved, apparently, by our enemies. It has nothing to do with love. Yeah, it well, has to it's do with our survival love. as a us Jewish love, state. Yeah. That's right. love. We love we, Israel. We've had a bear love hug it. from the United States right. that has prevented us from doing what's in our own best interest. But Gershon, we also no, had a series of Israeli governments dating back certainly to Oslo in 1993 that was willing to make concession after concession to divide Jerusalem, to make a Palestinian no, 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 capital. We never, we never had a, a, an agreement with the Palestinians on a permanent status agreement here. We've had two sides who have systematically breached every agreement they've signed. This has not been the good guys against the bad guys. We've signed agreements and we've breached them also. You compare us to one. Hamas and to Fatah no, that are blowing up Hamas. Uh, talking, buses? No, I'm not talking about blowing up Good buses. guys and bad guys? Who are the, who are the, who are both, we're bad and the Palestinians are bad? We offered them a final status arrangement in 2000 that and they responded by blowing up buses That's and right. killing and women and they were and very wrong in doing it and as a result there's no peace camp in Israel today and they paid a very heavy price. Oh, but you want the United mistakes. States to create one with you and your friends maybe and go against with the... You too, the I'm not in a camp that says that Israel has to give up our capital city and our ability to defend mm. ourselves in the hope that maybe somebody's going to you know love that us this afterwards. this capital city of ours is recognized by no one in the Who world. Cares? Not a single government in the world recognizes well, Jerusalem I'm, as a capital. I'm sorry. I want Jerusalem to be recognized by the entire world. Well, then why don't you country. demand that they recognize it instead of demand, saying we're going to give it I up in order for you to love us in a little ghetto of Western Jerusalem? I also recognize that in order for Jerusalem right. to be ours, we have to learn how to share it. Jerusalem is not ours exclusively. We totally share it. What are you talking about? Yes, you we have, share it. We have, we have, uh, we Prevented have... Prevented Muslims from praying in the... Because they've been beating up on Jews every yes, time. What are you talking about? Forty-year-old Muslims who have nothing to do with okay. the conflict and people who go to work every day who have nothing to do with the conflict. Okay, ding. People. Round this over. you got to stop. Before <laughs> we continue our discussion of Obama and the Muslim world, let's focus on the burning issue on the table here in Israel, namely settlements. First, let's hear what President Obama himself has to say on the subject in an interview with BBC. One meeting with Prime Minister Netanyahu, uh, I think that we have not seen uh, a, a set of uh, potential uh, gestures from other Arab states or uh, from the Palestinians that uh, might deal with some of uh, is, uh, some Israeli concerns. Well, you've got a job of work, and I at least put it like that. Always have a lot of work. Yeah, yeah. I mean, no, <laughs> nobody thought this was going to be easy. If it was easy, it would have been done. Uh, but uh, but I do think that we uh, we're going to be able to uh, get uh, serious negotiations back on track, and we're going to uh, do everything we can because not only is it in the interest of the Palestinian people to have a state, it's in the interest of the Israeli people to stabilize the situation there, and it's in the interest of the United States that we've got two states living side by side in peace and security. Okay, Gershon, this is definitely a hands-on president. But let me ask you this, with so many urgent burning issues on his table, North Korea, Iran, Afghanistan, not to mention his domestic uh, issues, which are equally crucial, why is it the business of the United States president that a kindergarten adds a room to an existing structure in an Israeli settlement? The state of Israel agreed to the roadmap for peace that the Americans authored. President Bush was behind it. 
And in that roadmap for peace, there are obligations that are put on the Palestinian Authority, which, which we demand that they fulfill. But there are also three primary obligations put on the State of Israel, that we redeploy our forces back to the positions we held in September 2000, that we freeze all settlement building, including natural growth, and that we remove the unauthorized outpost. These are commitments that the State of Israel took upon itself. I take our international commitments seriously. I think that the government of Israel should take them seriously. Mr. Lieberman has said that this is the only international agreement that Israel is obligated to fulfill. So I think that President Obama, in seeking to bring about future agreements in this region, needs to make sure that what is agreed upon is implemented. Carolyn, is that well, logical? Well, no, actually, it's not true. We didn't agree to the roadmap. The government uh, passed a decision in May 2004 regarding the roadmap which involved accepting the roadmap with 14 reservations. And That's the, the only. Those reservations. It doesn't matter. I'm talking about the obligations of the Israeli government, not the obligations of the American government. So, first of all, from a legal perspective, the Israeli government is not obligated to the roadmap as it is written. It is obligated to the 14 reservations it made, which included. Uh, uh, attenuation of all of the demands that you just laid out regarding Israel, and it also st stipulates that Israel is going to take no action vis-a-vis -vis the roadmap until after the Palestinians have purged all of the territory. Right, so wait, there's of the the, the no, 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 no. no. I'm saying what obligates the what obligates the state of Israel. And by the way, that is not a constitutional obligation in the sense that what we're we talking about here, what we are talking about here, is a decision by a government. That decision does not have to be continued by a, a successor government. But to the contrary, but no, it was, it was not. There was no said. positive, there was never any positive decision by the Netanyahu well, the government to adopt it. There has said. to be a vote. Let, let, let's In order to have an equal just a minute. amount let's of this. obligation, it has to be L voted on, and it has to be voted on. If you could, Caroline, okay. comment on just a recent comment by President Obama, mm -hmm. where he said that there's a need for more honesty between Israel and the U.S. Uh, we all know that the settlers, in effect, have used deception, wink and a nudge in dealing with our own government. And whenever they get a chance, they build on another hilltop, they, they expand settlements beyond what the government has even approved. Doesn't it have to sort of be brought back? No, you know, the thing is, is that, again, what's interesting is that from an international legal perspective, what individuals do, whether they're Israelis or Palestinians or, or Americans or whatever, it doesn't matter because the point is that if you, as I'm sure that Gershon and all of his friends want to, apply the uh, Geneva Conventions to uh, Judea and Samaria, then what they talk about is government operations. In fact, the most legal from an international perspective, Jewish settlement operations in Judea and Samaria are the ones that are not authorized by the government because they're the actions of private individuals. They're allowed and to do what they want so long. No, they're law not. Law. That's entirely in violation no, yes, of Yes, in, in your La La Land the version of international okay, law, where Jews okay, have no rights. We are right. not. No, the Jews yeah, exactly. have lots of rights, but we do but not we have rights. But we only have up where our rights involve us giving away our land to our sworn enemies. We have the right to, to give up Jerusalem. We have the right have to give the right up Judea and Samaria. We have the right to build as many military right. camps as we need to right. no, build but in that's the West a, Bank You're talking about Israel. a government versus individuals. No, I'm talking about I'm the rights of individuals. I'm talking about responsibilities on I'm talking about law. the rights of individuals. The individuals you're talking about the rights of okay, I, I, I think your disagreement is clear, Gershon. <laughs> Karen, I want to ask you this. Yes. You know, last week, Knesset member Benny Begin sat in that chair, and he said he favors dismantling the illegal outpost because Israel is committed to do it and because they're illegal. What do you say? Is, I say is that you're something part of, to it. I, I think words, that the government should be enforcing all of our laws, including laws against treason when it's committed by Jews or by Arabs. I think that our, our building code violations, whether they're, whether they're committed by Jews or by Arabs, all of them have to be equally enforced. What I disagree with, whether it's regarding outposts, whether it's regarding Bedouin villages in the Negev, or Arab villages in the Galilee, or Jewish building in, in uh, where I live in Mivaseret, I want the law to be equally enforced. When it is not equally enforced, when it is enforced against a specific group of citizens and not enforced against okay. another group of citizens, then you're not talking about the rule of law. Okay. You're talking okay. about the un it's unbending about of the rule of law. It's about the Israeli law be enforced upon the settlers. And, 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 and their violence against uh, Palestinians, yes, because and their violence done against anything. the army, and their right. violence against police. I want right. to see some of these people brought to justice. Oh, yes. Yes. You can't wait. Arrested. You can't wait. Oh, we want to see them suffer. 
her, oh, please. Carolyn, please come on. Okay, isn't that just being a little hypocritical? No, not at there all. There is settler violence. You may say, and okay. And they're arrested every single day. No. And, and, and released five minutes and later. Released, and no, they're not violence. released five minutes the charge, later. The, the, the penalty for killing a Palestinian is four months in prison and six months who in Who has been service. convicted of killing a Palestinian who received four months in, in, in jail? I'm just wondering. They're released. But because they're they released, weren't found Carolyn. guilty. What are you talking about? Of course they weren't found guilty. Right. So they're not convicted of course. Okay, you, you, guys, you guys need to take a, take a deep <laughs> breath. One second now, and there's the end of, there's, there was the bell, ending round two it. before heading into the third and final round. Let's hear the White House comments of President Obama and Prime Minister Netanyahu at their White House summit on May 18th on the linkage they're talking about, the linkage between Iranian nuclear issue and the Israeli-Palestinian peace process. It's very clear to us. I, I think we, we actually... We don't see closely on this. We see exactly eye to eye on this, that we, we want to move simultaneously and in parallel on two fronts, the front of peace and the front of, uh, uh, of uh, preventing uh, Iran from acquiring uh, nuclear capabilities. If there is a linkage between Iran and the Israeli-Palestinian peace process, I personally believe it actually runs the other way. To the extent that we can make peace with the Palestinians, uh, between the Palestinians and the Israelis, then uh, I actually think it strengthens our hand in the international community in dealing with the potential Iranian threat. Having said that, uh, I think that uh, dealing with Iran's potential nuclear capacity is something that we should be doing even if there already was peace between the Israelis and the Palestinians. Okay, Gershon, I'm guessing you agree with President Obama when he says that getting some movement on the Israeli-Palestinian peace process will help America deal with the Iranian nuclear threat. I'm not sure that I agree with him. I think that dealing with the Israeli-Palestinian peace agenda will help uh, the international community deal with lots of problems in the world. The Iranian threat isn't linked to the Israeli-Palestinian conflict. These are two things that need to be dealt with. The Americans have to lead on both issues. The Iranian threat is not an Iranian threat to Israel. It's an Iranian global threat, and it needs to be addressed by the international community, which means that Russia and China and the Arab states and Europe all need to make their point very clear to the Iranians that a nuclear Iran is not acceptable to the world. Caroline, hasn't Netanyahu been somewhat responsible for this linkage? Because he, he didn't really come to Washington with, with anything to offer. He didn't come with a peace plan. He didn't convince uh, Obama of anything. And so Obama is kind of uh, filling in the void. Um, no, I don't think that Netanyahu is responsible for this, and this is for two reasons. First of all, Gershon said at the outset that the only three actors, more or less, that he counted that are opposed to Palestinian statehood are the Israelis, the Libyans, I think you said, and the Iranians. But I would add the Palestinians to that, because... Um, they elected Hamas to lead them by majority, not only in Gaza, but also in Judea and Samaria. And they Hamas and Hamas, ha Hamas opposes Palestinian statehood. They want to establish uh, an outlet of an Islamic caliphate in Palestine. They're not a nationalist grouping. They're not, uh, they, they don't see statehood as their aim. And you look at Mahmoud Abbas and what he said in his uh, Washington Post interview as well last week, he's in no hurry for Palestinian state. But isn't that exactly the reason why Netanyahu should have been not right, perhaps, but smart? Since there is no possibility of Palestinian yeah. statehood right now with Hamas in control of Gaza, why not come to the U.S. president and say, yes, we're ready to move forward, yes, eventually. He did say that, Leah. He, did, he, he did. said he wants to but move no forward to on the two, na time. two states for two of nations. Of course not, because which is you the can't basis have a state. You can't... You can't have an Israeli withdrawal from more territory in Judea and Samaria when we know exactly no, what will happen to that territory. Right now they're just talking. That's right. No, no, no. no. Let, 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 me just, let me just say one more thing here about the linkage, which I think is just so pernicious. And by the way, Gershwin, I agree with you. They're not linked. Ah, good. They're not linked in the sense that... Iran wants to obliterate Israel. It wants to right. dominate the Middle East. It wants to dominate the world in the name of Shiite Islam. And it believes that by hearkening in Armageddon, they're going to get their 12th Imam, their Messiah, who has been sitting at the bottom of the well for, for the past thousand years. And he's going to come back and he's going to save the world for Ahmadinejad and his friends. And the thing about it is that uh, what I find most 
disturbing about what Obama is doing vis-a-vis -vis Iran is that he's made a timeline for speaking with Iran, which according to Israel military intelligence is longer than Iran's timeline for acquiring sufficient quantities of enriched uranium to right. make a bomb at will. So basically what Obama is doing with his policy of engagement towards the Muslim world, towards the Iranians, is he's enabling them to get a nuclear bomb. And worse than that, he's setting us up as a fall guy for that by claiming that it is only if we're forthcoming with the Palestinians that he's going to do right. anything to prevent he Iran from acquiring that. He didn't say that, but I think what he did imply Obama it, is waiting though. for... He did imply it. I'm not sure. I think what, what Obama is waiting for... By linking the two issues, for, he implied it. He said that, that it will help the United States exactly. deal with the international community. It's not a direct linkage between the Palestinian issue and Iran, but I think it's clear what the Americans are waiting for. What we should wait for, too, is the outcome of the Israeli, Iranian elections. Now, we don't know what way it's going to do, go, and Ahmadinejad's election was a surprise to the international community and all the Iran experts. Well, and he's don't know not really the, the one who calls the shots. No, no, but there are four people running in those elections. It's very likely that there will be a round two. Okay. I know some Iran experts, including Israeli Iran uh, experts, who say that if there is a round two, then there's a very good chance that Mousavi will, will win the elections. And Mousavi has said that he is willing to put the Iran nuclear program under international supervision oh, right. and, and, and to make it a, a, a civilian yes, program. Just I just wanted a, one comment on the Palestinian state. I think that, that we're in for a strategic change of the rules on the ground. And when you say that the, the Palestinian state is not being created, imminently being created, we might be in for a very big change. Because if Mahmoud Abbas would tomorrow ask the Security Council to grant membership to the state of Palestine, which was declared in 1988, today there may not be an American veto to that. And if the state of Palestine is granted membership in the United Nations, then Israel becomes a member state of the United Nations that's occupying another member state's land. So are you and then, us? Well, well, we, we can't discuss that point because we're out of time, but Carolyn, there's just time for you to, if that's okay, to give Steve. a final comment. How yeah. is this going to play itself out in your view? Tell us what you think is going to happen. Where? With this whole, uh, with the, in this collision course that we seem to be on with the United States. Well, we're on a collision course with the United w what's States. What's going to happen, do you think, Harry? I think that it's going to become very unpleasant. And I think that under the circumstances that, unfortunately, we find ourselves in with the Obama administration, particularly vis-a-vis -vis Iran, by the way, I think that we just have to do what's best for us. And I don't think we have any choice. I mean, I think that we should all be wishing... Uh, the government well and and strength and uh, telling them that we're behind them because we elected them to do certain things, one of which is to prevent Iran from acquiring nuclear weapons. Okay. All right. We're all out of time. The final bell is rung. We're going to leave it to our viewers to decide uh, who won on points. Uh, that's all the time we have for this week, and we'd like to thank our guests uh, for the evening, Carolyn Glick, Dr. Gershon Baskin. Yes, it was interesting. Thank you both very much. And we'd love to hear what you think. You can write us at ibatvnews at gmail.com. Until next Wednesday at the same time, thanks for watching Close Up. Shalom from Jerusalem.